Hey guys, Rexasaur here, and welcome back to another faction unit statistics thing. <laughs> anyway, today we're going to look at Carthage, um, and well, unlike Rome, there isn't that much choice when it comes to units for Carthage, although they are still, you know, quite interesting. Um, that said, I would have to say before starting, um, the unit selection for Carthage, I, I don't know. For me, it, it seems like it's very minor, it could have had so much more things which weren't added. I mean, historically, yes, Carthage was a mercenary state, but you don't really have that many mercenaries. Um, I mean, you got you got two melee mercenaries, half of the missile infantry is mercenaries. you got no spear mercenaries, which is a bit, sh you know, what to me? Uh, your missile cavalry is all mercenaries, and you got half of your melee cavalry is mercenaries. But there's got to be more, surely. Anyway, let's start where everything should start, with the generals. Always oh, starts with the generals. Now, looking at the generals, you do have the choice between African war elephants and conventional generals on uh, horseback. In my opinion, don't go for the war elephant, uh, mostly because if you get fire arrow on you and your general f goes a mark, runs a mock, uh, that could lead to issues. I, I'm not going to say it's not an interesting choice, uh, being, getting African War Elephants, although you are capped to two, so you won't be able to pick, an, you'll only be able to pick one of those more, um, so yeah, it's a bit annoying, um, I don't know if you can get, can you get both, yeah you can get both um, sets of elephants, um, I guess that's okay then, but I don't know. If you want a whole elephant army, then sure, do that. It would be a really fun thing to go for and go, whoa, where's, where's your general? He's on an elephant. But, personally, um, looking by everything, if you want to use your general's bodyguard, um, he does have marginally better stats. Actually, he's better of everything, except charge bonus. Um, but there's only 30 of them, which is why I was looking at the points cost. It's like, what? Why, why does he cost more? But there's actually 60 men in that. That is a unit of noble cavalry with a general in it, and that's it. Um, and it is shock cavalry, so it is pretty powerful. Um, personally, though, I would choose the general's bodyguard, um, mostly because it's cheaper, much cheaper. It allows you to put more money elsewhere, and um, but that's about it, really. It puts more money elsewhere. You don't really need, unless you want to use your general as a shock cavalry, you, you know, you don't really have to. Spear infantry wise, um, it's it, it's really difficult to choose. Um, definitely take some sacred band. You you can't go without them. Um, take two or three. Uh, they do get an amazing ability called uh, charge defense expert, which means its melee attack and damage is increased when charged. Which uh, I don't know. It's kind of annoying because you're in phalanx mode. No one's going to charge you anyway. Um, well. Unless, you know, you're going against, I don't know, I don't know why someone would charge you while you're in phalanx mode, to be honest. Um, but judging by everything else, if I just go off there, there we go. Um, I don't know. Between Libyan hoplites and late Libyan hoplites, the late Libyan hoplites have 15 more armor. Between Carthaginian hoplites and late Carthaginian hoplites, the late ones have 5 more armor. It's kind of like, oh, okay, we have hoplites with slightly more armor and that's it. It's like, oh yeah, we're worried their armor. We gave them proper chain mail today. It's kind of, I don't know, I think Carthage could have been a bit more varied uh, rather than just upgrade their armor a little bit. But in my opinion, you just basically, you, you right, I haven't actually put down my army. Um, I'm going to put three of those. I'm also going to not bother with the late Carthagean hoplites. I'm going to put th uh, three, four of those. And then two of those is maybe cannon fodder. Three of those are cannon fodder. No, oh, no, no, two, two. I'm gonna need something else. Missile infantry wise, you get Libyan javelinmen, Libyan peltas, which are very good defense wise. Look at that armor increase from 15 to 60. The health is by five, base morale by a lot. Uh, they cost a whole hundred more, but hell, uh, they don't really have that much difference. Um, but they are very good at taking fire, so I would recommend taking at least two or three. Can I get fire as they can get fire as they get with M3? Next you have Bailey Axe Slingers and Christian Archers. I am going to take two Bailey Axe Slingers because Slingers are awesome. Melee infantry wise, you either get Libyan infantry, 
mercenary Gaelic warriors or mercenary Iberian swordsmen. Um, the Gaelic uh, Gaelic warriors have more of everything, really. Uh, the only thing they are suck at is melee attack, and that's it. Uh, everything else they are better at, and a bit less melee defense. But they have more armor, more base morale. Oh, these guys! Wait, what? Heavy shot. Grants for it greater damage but shorter range reduce accuracy. What? Apparently these guys have some kind of maybe that oh they they must throw peeler um at the beginning of a charge, which is pretty okay. Ah oh, no, we're gonna take the Gaelic Warriors, they they just better to me. Um so we're gonna take oh man, i am running out of place. Alright, I'm gonna get rid of my crappy spear. Oh fuck. Well it looks like we've only got two Peltas as well. Uh, we're not going to take any Libyan infantry, we don't need it. Pike infantry. Alright, the difference between spears and pikes, I, I was asked this. Um, spear infantry has shorter spears and aren't like the best hoplites out there. Pike infantry are the long pike hoplites you saw in Rome to or the original one. Like you had your really long spears who were like the best um, um, phalanxmen. That is what a pikeman is. Um, they get a pike phalanx, which is amazing against everything. Um, we're not actually going to... Uh, although they're good, um, I like having a more maneuverable army. That's my personal. Um, I would recommend taking these maybe instead of a few Carthaginian hoplites, but they do cost quite a bit. 640 is quite hefty. Right, now we get between the elephants or melee cav argument, or shot cav argument, or missile cav. <laughs> Um, we're going to not look at missile cav because they are missile cav and no one allows you to take them usually or usually you're not allowed more than two. Um, you can take missile cav if you want, personally I always do. But for all, for this, this is an uh, all comers, newcomer kind of thing, y you know what I mean. Anyway, for melee we've got mercenary Iberian cav or Carthaginian cav. Um, the mercs have much more attack damage, these have much more armor health. That's pretty much the difference. These guys, these guys have a lot of stuff. They also got resistance to heat as well as discipline. These guys don't, uh, but they cost all hundred less. However, we also have elephants. Now, elephants are a bit of an annoyance in this game, I have to say, because they don't automatically charge. But I think that's the same for most missile things. But elephants basically count as missile cav, and then they can also, if they choose to, go into melee. I'd recommend taking either, I don't know, you can choose between the two. These cost a lot more, a lot more, but they're fun as hell. Um, they have quite a bit more armor, quite a bit more base bro. Actually, they have zero more armor, they just have ten more, two more health. Uh, and a lot more melee attack, and quite a bit more charge bonus. And melee defense. Mm. Um, Alright, I'm going to take two normal elephants, one shock cav, and I'm going to take two of these. And that allows me one unit of what well, my choice really. Um, I could take more Peltasts. I could take more Slingers. I can't take more Slingers. I'm ten away from small Slingers. Oh, I can take another one. Ah, well, there we go. Exactly one of these. There we go. That's my army. Um, very infantry heavy. Uh, very infantry heavy. Oh, actually, these are Peltasts. Ah, mediocre infantry heavy. No, quite heavy. I don't know. I haven't made a choice yet. Anyway, I'm going to see you on the campaign match. So you have to set this up. And, um, so yeah, I'll see you there. Okay, guys, oh, bloody hell. Okay, guys, this is my setup. Um, this is basically. Oh, I, I can't believe I set up uphill, it's kind of. Bleh. The way I've done this, right, is I put my uh, Peltasts, my Libyan Peltasts up front. They have a lot of armor, that means they can actually take uh, the um, missile uh, of uh, the other team. Uh, any slaying shots or anything will just hit their shields because they are quite big. If you look at their shields, they are pretty big shields. Um, and yeah, so that's a really good, like, instead of having cannon fodder, uh, well, or just missile fodder, uh, you have these here to take most of the hits. If you lose some, it's it's not really the end of the world, to be honest, but yeah, that's that's what I do here. Behind them i got slingers, uh, they are protected by the Peltast, and they don't kill your main force, which is nice. As my main line, I've put Carthaginian hoplites, and then I've put Sacred Band, and on and on in the sort of Salem, uh, not Salem, I don't know. Uh, that is because uh, Sacred Band, as you can see, have an area of effect, 
uh, encourage which is really nice and having them in between encourages every guy at least twice uh, even that guy actually is encouraged twice which is nice um, so yeah that's always good um, in addition guys I would like to inform you that hoplites do not start in phalanx formation and nor do any phalanx stuff you have to actually click the bollock the bollocks well, what? <laughs> the button we understand. Oh, you have to put them in, in phalanx, and then when they start, they'll go into phalanx and walk into phalanx and blah de blah. Uh, next, I put the general behind. Ah, I always put him there. Maximum area of effect to get every single person under his control. I put warriors, the warriors on both sides. They are very quick and lightly armored, which means they'll be able to either run to the side that needs more help, and basically they're there to so that they don't get in the initial charge, and then they can counter any attack. Um, We've got all of our horse on one side uh, and all the elephants on the other. That is because the enemy will be split at where to attack. If he attacks the elephants, which are the most amazing threat there, uh, these guys will be able to get behind enemy what lines are your and orders? You know, screw them over. On the other hand, if they go for these guys, they're going to have elephants, elephants, which are way more deadly. Um, that said, if they split it off and have all the melee against you here, and then all the missile elephants against you here, it means you have no missile against your Lala, middle, your which will be able to advance pretty smoothly at the enemy. And that's that tactic for this army, so that's why that's have set up like so. Um, I hope it's helpful if you use this army or use an army just like it. Um, a lot of you will probably be like, oh Rex, why did you get so many troops? Uh, why didn't you upgrade some of them like you did with the Romans, with you know your archers being having a bit of experience? Um, experience isn't everything. Uh, it used to be, but now it's kind of less so. It's more what troops you have and how you use them. Um, so you don't always need experience. If you have money spare, sure, use experience. But this is an exact 1,100 and. No, 1100, 11,700, there we, we go, that's the amount command. of money. Um, that is exactly the amount of cost of this force. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the Carthaginian uh, forces for the multiplayer. Um, next time I will be going through Macedon. Uh, so thanks for watching guys, and ta -ra.